So today we're going to be talking about preserving citrus. And on this side, we have some of the different ways that we preserve our citrus throughout the year. So most commonly we dry and grind our orange peel. So at the moment it's a bit soft, but we've got it like this sitting either on our very cool idling fire or just next to it. And at the moment it's quite soft, but when it's like that, like chalk, uh, then you know that it's ready to grind. And we grind it in our electric nut and spice grinder. And we use this in porridge, uh, a little bit in a hot chocolate, uh, in um, cookies and fruit bread and cakes, and it's just delicious. Uh, another thing that we do is we uh, slice and dry uh, lemons, um, whole pieces of lemon like this, um, and just do that in the sun or in our dehydrator. And usually I use that for pickling um, and also do that for teas. Uh, but more commonly, if we have excess oranges, um, then I also dry oranges and use that for teas. Um, <clears throat> so when we have finished uh, squeezing out as much of a lemon, the lemon juice as we can from the lemons, from a lemon, and we also put it behind our fire. And when I'm cooking rice or uh, soaking beans and cooking beans and things like that, then I'll just put a couple of these. They don't have any, um, any liquid in them, but they do rehydrate and they just add that really nice lemony flavor. And this was an experiment that I did last year. It says tree elbow lemons in tree elbow honey, uh, 11th of October, 2020. Uh, and it's gone really liquidy. It's medicinal. When you feel yourself with a little tickle coming on or feeling a bit vulnerable, then you can either just uh, have a sip of the, um, the liquidy lemon um, or just have a munch on one of those uh, lemon slices. And I've also been putting it onto uh, yogurt and stewed fruit and things like that. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be uh, preserving, fermenting uh, limes um, in salt. And these limes were gifted to us uh, by some friends uh, who are uh, in Albury. Um, amazing. So uh, thanks to Jeff and Kath and Andy and Ben and Rach. Um, so... What we do is uh, we take our citrus. I've never done this with oranges. I have done them with li um, lemons before. I've never actually done it with limes, uh, but I know it's going to be good. So I'm taking each one and I'm slicing it almost to the bottom. So not quite to the bottom. And I'm going to uh, stick it in my jar. Grab a handful of salt. This is salt from the Pink Lake. I'm just going to put the salt inside it. And really pack it in. Okay. And then next one. And if you look up uh, preserved lemon or preserved limes, uh, you'll come across uh, Moroccan recipes of doing it, and they pack theirs with uh, cloves and uh, cinnamon and bay leaves and uh, lots of chili to make theirs spicy. And so, yeah, that's not going to um, be as um, useful to us in this household if I already put the spices in there. Uh, I have done that once before and they just sat on the shelf. I couldn't think of where to, how to use them um, because if I'm going to put, put chilli in it, then uh, Woody's not going to like it and I want all of my food to be uh, palatable for everybody. So we can just add our chilies in later if that's what we choose. And a lot of recipes say that you should do it with just the soft-skinned 
uh, citrus, so the Maya lemons or the, um, what are the other lemons that are soft-skinned? I can't think, but most notably the, the Maya lemons. Uh, but I have tried it with really thick uh, le skinned lemons before and they worked really well. Now, as my jar is filling up, you really need to get all of the liquid to make sure, as I've said in so many other videos, make sure the solid is on top, that solids are all under the liquids. So I have here, this is a, my sauerkraut basher. It's a, a, a rolling pin with one of the handles that has fallen off. So I'm going to take that. You could just get a, um, some kind of masher or you could just stick your hand in there. I'm just going to push down as hard as I can, trying to get all of the liquid out of the lines. And I'm going to do the next layer. And there's no exact way of doing this. You don't need uh, a recipe. You don't need to weigh the, the citrus first before you put the salt in. You just need to pack it in. Fill them and pack them. I've just remembered another way that I've preserved orange oranges before. Um, I don't have one on the go at the moment, is that uh, so every time you finish, we finish uh, an orange and then we put the peel, including the pulp and everything, uh, in vinegar. And then we use that either for salad dressings or if it's a bit bitter, then we use it as a cleaner, or just a nice uh, vinegar spray. It's especially nice in the bathrooms or anywhere in the kitchen. <laughs> This orange is anti, the peel is antimicrobial, which is what you want in a cleaner. Ugh. Good stuff. The next layer. really make sure that uh, all of the solids is under the liquid or under the liquid. Just going to squeeze a couple of these in. So to make sure that all of, all of the solid stays under the liquid, I just have a, a jar here, which I'm going to put in there and some trusty rubber bands. Just gonna push these, put these around it. Push that down and by the wonder of osmosis, uh, over the next uh, 24 hours, uh, this is going to fill up completely uh, with the uh, the lime juice. So this one here that's poking out a little bit, that one will be covered. And I'm going to ferment this probably for about six weeks. These limes are quite thick skinned. 
Um, so they will need a bit more time than uh, normal. Well, than, than if they were thin skinned. And here's one that we did uh, last year. And so the liquid is going to go really cloudy and it's very salty, obviously. Um, so we use this in soups and stews and salads and uh, dips and things like that. And if I'm, yeah, this is also quite a thick skinned one. Um, but if I'm going to put it in a soup or stew, then uh, I would just um, probably just take a, a quarter like this and uh, just chop it up really finely and stick it in. Um, but if I'm going to uh, use it in a dip or a salad, then I'll rinse it, rinse it under the tap first, under cold water, and just gets a bit more of that salt, the excess salt off. Uh, but in a soup or stew, it doesn't matter. You just have to add less salt. Uh, but in a salad, I find you don't want it to chew down on a really salty bit. But it's absolutely delicious. Um, and definitely something that I like to do every year. Yeah, so this is... Uh, what I have left of a big jar like this, and I'm slowly savouring it. Um, yeah, I don't like to use uh, too much of it uh, at once, so just so I do, so it does last last me the year. So when these are ready, I'm going to uh, take the jar out, take the rubber bands away, have a taste. If it's not ready, then I'm going to uh, stick it back on the fermenting table. But when it is ready, I'm going to take uh, the jar and rubber bands away, put the lid on and I'm going to put it somewhere as cold as possible. I don't have room and I won't have room in my fridge so we have a cellar so I'll put them there. And what I might do is keep a small jar up in the house and uh, put the big jar down there just to stop the fermenting but if a small jar is up here then we'll just make sure we eat that in a few weeks time. So I think to myself, I'll definitely remember that time so we had a quiet house and made that video about the, the lines but I won't Ta -da! any questions put them in the comments thanks everyone